of how we can think about uh, pros and cons. Okay, we're going to go through a few different ideas here. I I don't think I've heard a conversation on this exact topic, um, and I'm interested in it because, well, I make money uh, trading and investing, and I, I want to be able to, you know, you you hear about compounding, you hear about compounding. You hear about uh, velocity, the velocity of money, and trying to increase the velocity, or you know, get get a bigger bang for your buck, or uh, trade the same money in and out multiple times to try to grow it faster. You hear about that concept. Um, so the first thing that uh, I want to take a look at here is, let's say I have. So this is kind of our, our first approach, approach number one here. Let's say that I have a, um, the account type doesn't matter, but let's say that I have, and I'm going to start with smaller numbers just to make the concept simple. Let's say it's a $10,000 account, okay, and I have a risk rule where I'm going to risk 1%, okay, and I'm just going to reinvest the profits, okay. So the profits, we'll put those in green, I'm just going to keep the profits in the account. Okay, so let's think about the advantage on that. So my initial risk, if I have a $10,000 account, my initial risk is 100 bucks. Okay, $100 risk. But if the account size grows to, let's say, 15K, that'd be great, right? 50% return, that'd be fantastic. Uh, then my risk at 1% is going to be 150 bucks. $150 risk. Okay, now I think the advantage of that is <clears throat> you're going to make money faster, right? I mean, wouldn't this have the compounding effect? Exactly. So explain that. Explain that, Hector. How, how does this have a compounding effect that your, your account's growing and you're risking more in each trade? What does that mean? Well, what's happening is, okay, and, and, and again, there's mathematics and then there's, <laughs> and then there's a human psychology. Um, and so for, all of us have this, these magic numbers that once we cross over that number, like for instance, I have certain numbers that if it's too big, um, I don't sleep at night. I'm checking to see if anything happened in the market. And when we get, you know, so maybe we were okay when our, when we had a $10,000 account and we were okay losing 500, but maybe the account grows. And like I said, now we're at 15,000 and maybe we're not okay losing 750, maybe 750 is not making us trade the way that we should. Because again, trading is psychology. Um, so even though it sounds really, you know, makes sense, I'll just keep doubling and I'm just going to increase my percentage in the compounding. And compounding is very powerful. There, you know, you also have to figure out the fact that we're humans. We're not machines. We're not algorithms. And so we, we, need, to, uh, we need to work with what we're comfortable trading. And um, I know that I have certain sides. And once I exceed a certain size, I'm worrying about it. I'm thinking about it all the time. And I'm not following my rules. Perfect. So your percent fluctuation may be the same. Mm -hmm. uh, fluctuation is equal. Uh, well, let's just say is same. But the problem is uh, the dollar amount, dollar uh, of the fluctuate, dollar amount of the fluctuation increases, right? Yes. And that's what can mess with your head, right? There's the psychology part. Exactly. Okay. So, so how do we fix this part? How do we fix this part? Well, maybe, maybe you take that 5,000 bucks and you put it somewhere else, right? And then you're just dealing with the same numbers, you know, at, at, uh, on a daily basis or whatever, right? Yes. Okay. So that's the first point I wanted to make. I've got a little cheat sheet here. I've got a little <laughs> cheat sheet. Here, okay. Um, the, the, there is a benefit, though. Okay, there is a benefit, and to keeping it in the account, and that is if you look at your equity curve. If we look at the equity curve, let's think about this for a second. So we're still with number one. If you look at chart, like long-term charts where they show compounding, um, let's say that I'm able with that ten thousand dollars to generate a ten percent return, right? Uh, well, that's a thousand bucks, right? So mm -hmm. if I if I make a thousand, 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 then my rate of growth is linear, right? Yes. 
it's not speeding up. It's not slowing down. It's just increasing a thousand bucks, a thousand bucks. I mean, maybe it's every year, right? I make a thousand bucks on 10,000. I make a thousand bucks on 10,000. I make a thousand bucks on 10,000. There's no compounding. There's no explosive growth to the rate at which I'm making the money, right? Because it's just 10% return on $10,000. Well, if you keep the money in the account and the account gets bigger and bigger and bigger, a 10% return on 15,000 is 1,500. And then a 10% return on 20,000 is 2,000. So there is a compounding effect when you keep it in the account, right? Yes. Okay. So that line would look something more like uh, the orange one. Well, actually, I don't know if it would be below it, but the general idea is it would start to compound, right? Okay, so this is where you get the compounding. This is where you get the, uh, let's just say linear. Okay, so this, I'm taking money out. Here, I'm keeping money in. Okay, so I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this, uh, Hector, and I'm saying, why the heck wouldn't I want to be the orange guy? Okay, now now let's let's look at um, a third option. How could we do want to be the orange guy? The problem is, again, it's our psychology. So how do we get over our psychology and still be the orange guy? That's what we got to figure out is how do we reap the benefits of compounding and still be able to trade within a range where we're not worried about that we're risking bigger numbers that 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 mess with our head uh you we're, we're simpatico brother let's talk about that that's, talk about that. <laughs> that's what we want. okay so let's talk about number two here so there's a couple different ways we could do that okay there's a couple different ways we can do that here's one way i'm i'm thinking about it okay so what if what if I had this uh, $10,000 account, okay, 10K account, and um, let's throw out account types. Let's say this is just a margin account. Let's say this is a margin account, okay? Um, and maybe I take the profits from that, maybe I take the profits from that, and I put it in, uh, well, how much money can I put in an IRA every year just for one person right now? You know what the contribution limit is for that, Hector? The contribution for an IRA? Yep. Uh, depending on the type of IRA, um, I believe it's if it's a regular IRA, it might be in the $2,000 range. And if I think if it's a Roth, it's a lot higher. Uh, Roth and traditional are the same. I put I put Hector on the spot on that one. It's it's Right now, it's 2500 bucks. Uh with an IRA, um, if you're over a certain age limit, I think you can go up to 6,500 because they let you get do uh, catch up contributions. But um, whatever, whatever the number is, you can put a certain amount of money in an IRA. And there's tax implications there, benefits and and such. Even if it wasn't an IRA, even if it was just a second account, what if Hector, I take my profits from one account and then use it to to maybe fund another one? And that I, I like cycle. That. That would help me very much psychologically, um, wow. and and there's also there's a, there's another benefit to that as well because if if we look at this from the perspective as this is our our trading business is our own business our own company and when we work for a company one of the things that we're looking for the company to do is to take care of us in our old age is to is um, and and so we expect the company to have a retirement plan a four hundred one k or something but if you're your own business Shouldn't you have this take care of yourself just like you expect your company to take care of you? So by if this is your trading business, well, then it would be prudent for you to worry about yourself as well. And one of the ways that we can do that is by taking a portion of the profits and putting it into an IRA. Okay. And I can do pretty much every strategy, not counting naked uh, puts and calls, uh, in an IRA, right? So you, you also are able to do similar, similar strategies. Well, Right. We're able to do covered calls, which should probably be the core of most traders' portfolio. Do if you're able to do covered calls, and covered calls are my bread and butter. Um, so that's a beautiful thing. Uh, 